a young guy with interesting hair coloring. One half black, the other white, in a strict suit was sitting near a tree. His name was Yin Wudao. He was the scion of a super rich family. However, due to his certain predilections, he was killed by Lu Wang. There was no word for mercy in this villain's vocabulary. Therefore, he easily killed Yin Wudao. However, after his death, Wudao was chosen by the great villainous system. Above the guy stood a beautiful girl with long white hair and dressed in a beautiful outfit with Chinese conditions. In her smartphone, she saw that according to the diagnostic system, the most terrible scoundrel, namely Yin Wudao, had just died. The girl assumed that it was him. She turned on the data transmission of the divine rank villain system. As a result, Yin Wudao was reborn again. Now he was ready to take revenge on Lu Wang. It was a legendary confrontation, the main antagonist and the main character. Now Yin Wudao, reborn again, will have to become the best. He will have to try hard and play dirty, because now he has decided to become the most outstanding antagonist. And he knew that playing the role of a villain is very fun. Fast forward to the very beginning, how it all happened. Zhang City, beautiful, blooming and not quite peaceful. It was in this city that Yin Wudao was killed. Not far from the temple, lifting by the neck, a guy with a different hair color was pressed by another, beautiful red-haired guy. With a haughty face, he asked his victim if Wu Dao knew who his tormentor was. To which, undeterred, the young man replied to him that he was a worthless son-in-law of the Zhang family. But this angered only the red-haired one. He told him to gouge out his eyes. Because in front of him was the lord of the Dragon King's palace, the Dragon King Xiao Chen himself. Yin Wu Dao's eyes widened. He couldn't believe that the legendary Dragon King was pinning him to the tree. Pushing the young man harder into the tree, the red-haired man shouted that the young man had broken his life. The Dragon King went to China, dreamed of a peaceful life, but Wu Dao tried to take over his woman. Therefore, now painted in two colors now has to pay with death. The frightened Yin screamed for mercy and that he had made a big mistake. But Xiao Chen was adamant that the word mercy did not exist in his vocabulary. So he wrung the young man's neck and, gathering his retinue, walked away from the lifeless body. But Yin Wu Dao's soul couldn't put up with it. He didn't want to lose his precious life because of betrayal. The guy's soul was still flying over his body, looking for an opportunity to return to it. But then a cloud of smoke abruptly appeared, and a beautiful blonde girl in a red dress with Chinese patterns and a small black fur coat on her shoulders came out of it. She looked at something on her smartphone, and the young man went down to see what she saw there. On the screen, he saw that there was a message that the system had revealed the death of a monstrous villain. Out loud, the girl assumed that this was the same guy, Yin Wu Dao. The girl pressed something on the phone, and Wu Dao's soul began to be pulled back into his body. But then darkness came, through which voices could be heard. Yin opened his eyes. He and several other people were in the office. He saw a woman in a formal suit with a high hairstyle shouting at Xiao Chen. She was dissatisfied with the fact that he came to the company without permission, drove him away. This woman was the mother-in-law of the Dragon King. In turn, the red-haired man calmly replied to her that Ryu Ozu was his wife, and he would settle matters with her himself, asked not to involve outsiders. The woman screamed that the king would not be able to remove anything. The Zhang family has a $10 billion debt. She couldn't figure out how he would settle it. The woman considered a guy who could only cook and clean garbage. Ryu Ozu was blind when she chose him as her son-in-law. Watching the dialogue, Yin Wu Dao began to come to his senses. He understood that he had already seen and heard this scene. Feeling his neck and head, the young man realized that he had been reborn. Looking at his watch, the guy realized that he had returned half an hour ago, before he was crushed to death by the Dragon King Xiao Chen. Then a sign appeared above him for a few seconds, which read that the supreme system of the great villain was activated. Also, the guy was given a system task, the task to survive. Meanwhile, the system has started a countdown, and the sign disappeared. The young man was afraid that he would be killed again in half an hour. He didn't want to die again. A beautiful girl with long black hair was sitting next to him in a formal suit. She excitedly asked him if he was alright. The girl put her hand to the guy's forehead and said that he had a high fever, asked how he was feeling. Out of the corner of his eye, Yin noticed that Xiao Chen was seeing this picture. The girl who so solicitously asked about his condition was none other than that Ryo Zhu, the Dragon King's wife. And then Yin Wu Dao pushed the girl's hand away, shouting for her to cling to him. Immediately, the mother-in-law jumped up to the guy, grabbing his forearm. The woman asked Mr. Yin to calm down. The woman asked the young man not to be angry and calm down, convinced him that the loser was not worth his anger. Then she turned her attention to Xiao Chen and told him that Mr. Yin was a very good person. He helped Zhang solve the problem with an investment of 10 billion. And if you open all the cards, then Ryo Zhu decided to remarry Mr. Yin. But the red-haired man refuted all the words of the woman, saying that it was he who organized investments in the amount of 10 billion. He is the head of the dragon's head and no one else. The guy tried to convince Xiao Dong, 
who is his mother-in-law, of this. But then the sound of a slap sounded. This blow was inflicted by Ryo herself, who ordered Chen to be silent. She shouted that the guy can't consider himself close to Chairman Zio just because the guy's and Chairman's last name is the same, Zio. The girl believed that the guy appropriates other people's merits and did it brazenly. Thus, he will only make her despise him more. At that moment, Yin Wu Dao was sitting on the sofa and worried that this trick of hers would shorten his life. The girl did not let up and shouted that the Zio family does not raise useless garbage, insisted that the guy get the hell out of the Zhang family. These words strained Yin more, because he was worried that this would make the king even angrier and it would hurt him even more. There was silence in the room for a while, and Yin Wu Dao realized that he was doomed, because everything is going exactly the same. The Dragon King told his relatives not to regret it and his mouth twisted. Wu Dao noticed this and rushed to stop it, but then his mother-in-law and the girl herself blocked his path. In two voices, they started shouting at him to calm down, asking him not to do stupid things. The girls said that if a guy hits a red-haired guy, he will only get his hands dirty. Ryo Zhu tried to convince the young master that she had no feelings for him, that she has a name and a social position. Then suddenly three guys who were with the king at the moment when he was killing Yin appeared in the room. The red-haired man shouted, rubbing his fists, that there would be no more pretense. All the cards were thrown on the table. He is the Dragon King and smiled wryly. It meant that life and death are unpredictable when the Dragon King with a crooked smile. According to rumors, the Dragon King's palace is the number one foreign underground organization with enormous power and respected status. Three precious workers are subordinate to the Dragon King. Baezong is a tyrant. He was responsible for power. Kaishin is the god of wealth, responsible for the wealth of the family. And Yama is the lord of hell, who is responsible for life. From this trio, Kaishin stepped forward and held a contract in his hands. She said that if they dared to disobey the Dragon King, then this 10 billion contract would be cancelled immediately. Baezong held the phone in his hands and said that just one phone call and the Yin and Zheng family would disappear from Zhang City. Taking out two pistols and pulling the bolt, he said that as soon as the king gave him an order, he was ready to kill everyone. Yin Wudao clutched his head. He understood that there was another dead end and he would die again. The guy was indignant why the villain can only be a springboard for the show-off protagonist. Wudao was not ready to put up with this. With a haughty face, the king said that he would not accept Yin's pleas for mercy, but would be able to give him a decent death. However, Wu Dao's eyes turned red and with perfect indifference, he told his rival that he had not planned to beg the king for mercy. Without conceding to his opponent, the king said that he knew that the Yin family was powerful in China. However, she is an insignificant speck of dust in front of his dragon king palace. Smiling impudently, now not at all afraid of death, Yin Wu Dao said that just one call and the dragon king and his entire retinue would be wiped off the face of the earth. Still with the same cheeky grin, the king said that Yin's behavior was arrogant, and he would gladly look at someone who is capable of such a thing. To which the guy with two hair colors just smiled. Fifteen minutes later, several people in equipment burst into the office, as well as a girl in uniform, who shouted in order to arrest everyone. It was the commander of the Red Shield Special Operations Group, Liu Man. The men quickly tied up the assistance of the Dragon King, and a girl came up to the guy himself, holding handcuffs in her hands. She informed Xiao Chen that he had been arrested. He was the leader of an illegal foreign organization and has long been on the international red list with an arrest order. Generosity will also be shown to those who admit their guilt. Those who do not admit it will answer with all severity, leaving in handcuffs. Xiao Chen asked Yin Wu Dao if he was interested in military prowess. He asked where the guy's decency was. With a smile, Yin replied that he was a villain. But all this angered the commander, who pushed the detainee and said that she didn't care about the ranks, she had a clear order. Turning to Wu Dao, the girl said that his reward for the report would soon be credited to his account, half a million per person, without paying income tax. With a smile, the young gentleman said that mutually beneficial cooperation was a great honor for him and bowed. Then a picture popped up in front of Yin's face, which said that the owner had completed the task and successfully received one point of the pride of heaven. Wu Dao realized that, having finished with the proud son of heaven, you can appropriate his pride points. However, the question remained, what can this pride of heaven do? The sign changed and now it had information that the system had received the golden finger of the dragon king Zio Chen. The owner was offered to perform an operation, which consisted in choosing. He had to choose what to do with the true Kai, copy or separate. Yin Wu Dao decided that it was something like defeating a monster and dropping treasures. It made sense. The guy remembered that the word of mercy is not in the lexicon of the Dragon King, so he has no choice but to prevent bad consequences. So he clicked the separate operation. At that moment, Zio Chen fell to his knees right while the guy was being led out of the office. The commander got angry and started shouting for him to calm down and not do stupid things. The guy replied to her that he suddenly felt as if his body had been emptied. With a cheeky smile, Yin hugged the king's wife and looked at his phone screen. 
and I saw the money credited to his account for the spy denunciation. He told the girl that he was ready to accept everything she had. At this time, the girl was thinking only that the famous Dragon King, and he could not cope with Yin Wudao. The woman who was still Xiao Chen's mother-in-law realized that there was a lot of money in the young master's account. She immediately ran up to him and began to complain that Xiao Chen's accounts were now arrested, investments could not come from him now, and the Zhang family was still facing bankruptcy. She asked Mr. Ying to fulfill his earlier promise. To this, Wu Dao replied that everything would depend on Miss Zhang's attitude towards him. From these words, the girl blushed and thought. She remembered that Xiao Chen was not treated badly, even when they were not married. He never revealed his identity to her, he was a liar to her. Now she will have to be with Yin Wu Dao to save the Zhang family. However, this guy didn't suit her either. He was a naturally windy man, perverted, cruel and arrogant. She could tell for sure that her life was ruined for the sake of her family. Therefore, having overcome herself, the girl raised her eyes to the gentleman, made a cute face and asked for help to save the Zhang family, pressing the girl even closer to him. The young man said that he could save the Zhang family, but she should know what he wanted. The girl got angry. Over her head the guy saw that the degree of location was minus 100, which equaled the attitude towards him as hatred, and immediately there was a sign that notified the guy about a new task. The task, which was a side one, was as follows, to capture the beloved daughter of Heaven Zhang Ryuzu. Task Requirement The task will be considered completed only when the degree of location of the other side reaches 90. The reward for the task will be one point of Heaven's pride, business talent. Yin Wu Dao was shocked, because now the girl's disposition was completely negative. How can he raise it now, raise it to 90 and above? And then he saw how the girl pulled her lips to him for a kiss. This made the guy a little angry. He asked Walt if it was difficult to feel such disgust for him, but at the same time deliberately fawn over him. To this statement, the protesting girl shouted that this was not the case and she was not disgusted with him. The guy asked if she even knew what was on her mind. He was angry that people wanted an investment of 10 billion. After all, he wasn't even their son-in-law, but there is something to talk about in business. He will give them 10 million to buy out the Zhang Corporation. The mother-in-law was indignant. She ran up to the girl and hugged her. There was a sign above Ryo's head that the level had dropped to minus 120. The hatred had intensified. Yin Wudao headed for the exit, telling the women that he knew how difficult it was for them to accept it right away. But it was their only way out. He asked Ryo Zhu to come to his villa when they had thought it over. They would sign a contract there. A small sign blocked the guy's path. It said that the system noticed a sharp drop in attitude. She asked for a change of strategy. But smiling, the guy pushed her away because he knew better than any system how to communicate with women. A red sports car drove up to a huge and beautiful villa on the coast. Yin Wudao came out of it, loosening his tie. He complained about the temperature of the weather being too high. He was immediately surrounded by servants who bowed and greeted the owner. But we came across rudeness, because because of such heat, Wudao almost turned the car over while driving, and people had a day off. The guy loudly began to call the girl by name, heading for the entrance. Su Kingya is a young beautiful girl, with long pink hair and green eyes. She was wearing a light dress and sitting on the sofa, peeling an apple. The girl immediately jumped when the owner came into the room. She said she wasn't expecting him so early, so she didn't have time to prepare the water for bathing, and apologized. But Yin was interested in the characteristic that he saw above the girl's head. The degree of location was 90, which equaled being in love. But there was also a scale of fear, the degree of which was 80, which meant fright. Yin was surprised by both data. He was not sure that the girl was in love with him, although there were hints from her behavior. But his fright strained him. He can't understand how he scared the girl who serves him. Then he saw a bruise on her arm and asked what was wrong with her arm. Quickly hiding the injury, the girl said that it was okay. And then the guy remembered the moment the other day. Roughly grabbing the girl by the hair, ordered her to relieve his tension. And so he assumed that this was what was causing her fright, because he remembered her eyes full of fear. Wu Dao reflected that, having gained the experience of resurrection from the dead and looking back at the past, what he had done before, he realized that his behavior exactly corresponded to his rank as a villain. He grabbed the girl by the bare shoulder and said that he remembered about the meditation room, asked her to prepare it for him. And the girl quickly ran to prepare the room, asking for a couple of minutes. Looking at the trail of the fleeing girl, Yin thought that given that he had received her as a repayment of a debt, he would treat her well. He made this decision for the love, awe and loyalty of the girl to him. After her rebirth, Yin couldn't let her live in fear anymore. A few minutes later, the guy was already sitting in the meditation room with a bare torso in the appropriate pose. The room smelled of incense. The young man's eyes were closed. He concentrated his strength in his palms. Therefore, he did not notice how the same girl who resurrected him appeared in the room. She looked at the guy and thought that she had not helped him to start training for nothing. 
He had a high cultivation speed. It was indeed a rare gift. She was glad that she had not made a mistake with the choice of a person. Then the girl noticed a small green piece of jade on the neck of a guy who is as cheerful as a pendant. She decided it was a good place to hide from the checks of the wandering gods and moved there, turning into an energy beam. The guy finished his meditation and was happy. The true Kai of the Nine Dragons was really a good thing. He felt his bone marrow and tendons being cleansed, his body calming down. Wu Dao was sure that all the impurities were removed from the guy's body exactly as it was written in the meditation book. Then Su Kingya came into the room, who was holding a small tray with a soup cup on it. She asked Wu Dao to eat ginseng soup, handing him a tray. Kingya looked at the half-naked guy quite calmly, pulling a vulgar grin. The young man told the girl that she had such a good body in front of her, and maybe on the first day she would be able to restrain herself. But after a couple of weeks, he could not be sure that everything would be the same. The girl blushed. He asked her to come take a better look. I felt that she was delighted and excited at heart. The girl hesitated and began to mumble. But after laughing, Yin grabbed the soup and began to eat, saying that he was joking. He praised the soup, saying that it was very tasty today. Having calmed down a little embarrassment, the girl asked if Wu Dao could let go of the girl he brought last night. King Ye also said that when she heard that this girl's older brother was a soldier, she was worried that he would take revenge on Yin. But Wu Dao, after finishing the soup, asked her what kind of girl she was talking about. Then I gave her the plate and went to the shower. Su looked after him and thought that she would hope now that he would no longer do evil. After getting out of the shower, Wu Dao wondered which girl King Ye was talking about, why he didn't remember. Passing in his room, the guy took a hair dryer and, looking in the mirror, began to dry his hair. But then he saw in the reflection, then behind the canopy on his bed lay a shadow. The guy walked up to the bed and pulled back the canopy. She was sleeping peacefully on his bed. She was naked and just covered with a blanket. There was utter shock on the guy's face. Yin Wu Dao realized that this was the girl Zai Kingya was talking about. He remembered that the day before, he had been at the club with Zhang Renji. He was one of the four young masters of Zhang City. They were drinking and discussing the girl they saw. Yin believed that at first glance, this girl was an innocent novice, she had no place there. His friend laughed and asked if he liked this type. He even offered to wrap it up for him. Wu Dao clutched his head. He couldn't have imagined that this guy would actually send him a person. Yin believed that he was careless with his friends, and could not imagine for what sins he was being punished. He was trying to figure out how the word danger related to this girl in bed. Then the pictures in front of Wu Dao flashed up again. One said that a systematic approach of the pride of heaven was detected. A new task was issued by the system. The task was the following, to survive. It seems like such a simple, but at the same time difficult task. Yin shouted that this was the end. He ran to the monitor in his room and looked at the screen. It really showed that someone had invaded the territory of the pitchfork. A young man with purple eyes, wearing a t-shirt and sweatpants, was moving quickly towards the entrance, knocking down all the guards on the way. Yin was amazed at how this guy's fighting qualities were off the scale. He watched as this young man quickly dealt with all his guards who were lying unconscious around him. The guy looked through the camera into Yin's eyes and he saw overwhelming aggression. He was afraid that this time did not bode well. The young man was already walking through the house and shouting for Yin to come out. It was the soldier king Lin Feng. And, undeterred, Wu Dao came out of his room in a bathrobe. He coldly asked who had the courage to break into his house, to which the guy replied that his name was Lin Feng and that he was here to find his sister Lin Yuru. The guy shouted a threat to him that if he touched even one hair on her head, then his death would be painful. Yin only grinned at this. He still arrogantly asked the guy who this hairy guy who dares to shout at him. In response to this, the purple-haired man made a lunge towards the owner of the house and told him to call him Hansen. Yin decided that this would not be a bad moment to experience the true Kai of the Nine Dragons. So summoning his strength, he put his fist out to meet the guy's fist. A huge flash of light lit up the room when the guy's hands collided. After the blow, Yin felt this incredible power. The guy realized that if it had been the old him, then this blow would have laid him down with one blow. Then he felt a guy grab him by the throat and raised his other hand again to strike. Lin Feng told Yin that he didn't expect him to be able to survive taking a hit. After all, Wu Dao was much stronger than other rich kids. But this will not save him from punishment for touching his sister. Then the girls came out of the room. Kingya and the same Lin Yuru already dressed in a dress. She screamed at her brother to stop. The girl tried to explain to him that he misunderstood Mr. Yin. Here the guy stopped his hand a couple of centimeters from Yin's face. He turned his head to his sister and asked her what it all meant in the end. With the words that the guy is rude, I took his hand away from me. The girls sat down on the sofa, and the guys remained standing not far from them and each other. Yuru started telling me that the bad guys had been mocking me last night. Sister Kingya saved her, and Mr. Yin had absolutely nothing to do with it. She said she had just woken up in Sister Kingya's bed, unharmed. No one here has harmed her. 
But the girl's brother did not let up. He shouted that it was impossible. When normal people are faced with such things, they should be sent to the hospital, not brought to their home. To which Kinga said that she was a doctor of medical sciences. To which the purple-haired man closed his eyes and muttered that there were no decent rich people. He still can't get over it. Putting a glass of wine on the table, Yin said that Lin does not distinguish between good and evil. He told him that his great-grandfather was the honored founder of the country. His grandfather served on the border, his father worked hard to manage this province of the East China Sea. His mother pays tens of billions in taxes every year. He couldn't understand why this upstart could blacken the efforts of three generations of the Yin family. The guy was only embarrassed by all this. The girl ran up to her brother and, putting her hands on his chest, asked him to apologize to Mr. Yin. Iru assured her brother that he was not a bad person. Completely confused and looking down at the floor, the young man apologized, saying that he was mistaken. And quickly grabbing his sister by the hand, he led her to the exit, saying that they would leave them alone and leave. But Yin's voice was heard behind them, ordering them to stop. The young master asked them who allowed them to leave. Frowning, Lin Feng asked what else he wanted from them. Yin told him that they had seriously injured four of my bodyguards and wanted to leave with nothing without paying off. To which Feng said that this was his omission, and he would reimburse their medical expenses. But this only angered Wu Dao. He began to shout angrily that Feng was going to reimburse the bodyguards for expenses if his sister ran away. She ran away to earn money, so she became a dancer. There must be someone in this family who needs money. Lin Feng looked at his sister in surprise, who folded her hands and lowered her gaze to the floor. She apologized to her brother and said she saw him working hard to cover the costs of her mother's surgery. The girl decided to help him to lighten this burden. Clenching his hands into fists, Feng whispered in an angry voice that 30 years in the east, 30 years in the west, thus making a reference to the expression about the flooding of the Yellow River bed, which could change the location of the village, which was located on its banks. He also whispered that one should not laugh at poor young people, but his speech was interrupted by Yin Wudao, who mockingly said that then do not laugh at poor middle-aged people, do not laugh at old poor people, and finally, not dead are the best poor people. Therefore, he put forward an offer to Feng which not only cancelled the compensation payments to the bodyguards, but would also give him one million. He held out a beautiful black business card with the words that Feng was his personal bodyguard, to which Lin became very angry and started shouting that, after leaving the barracks, he swore that he would never serve for money. Lin Yuru tried to reason with her brother, saying that his character bills would not pay for their mom's operation. It was no longer possible to postpone the operation, and she kicked her brother to come over and take the card. Relieved of his anger, Feng took the card and said that Mr. Yin was a good man and now he, Lin, was at his service. Then Yin Wudao saw that the tablets had appeared again. One of them said that the task was completed. The reward for this was the Soldier King. A complete list of attributes, namely tactics, combat, shooting, climbing, skydiving and much more. After that, another sign popped up, which said that due to the fact that the system found that the degree of devotion of the follower is 20, it is temporarily impossible to obtain Heaven's Pride Points. The receipt will be possible if the degree of devotion of the follower is interrupted by the mark of 100. The true Kai of the Nine Dragons combined with the attributes of the King of Soldiers is simply invincible. Yin realized that the random reward is so cool. Then shouldn't the extremely able-bodied Heaven's Pride points be simply stunning? The brother and sister bowed and thanked for such a sum. They promised to repay the gentleman for it. Meanwhile, Yin was looking at the fact that above Feng's head there was a line of his devotion 20, which equaled doubt, and he decided that it was more or less in order. Over his sister, the situation was better, she was a degree of 60, which was worship. This surprised the young gentleman very much, and then the tablets fell out again, on which Yin Wudao was given a new task. He needed to capture the proud daughter of Heaven Lin Yuru now, the reward was plus one point of the pride of Heaven, the talent of treasure evaluation. The requirement for this task was to get the degree of location of the opposite side to 95. Yin felt embarrassed for such a naive girl, and the young master released his brother and sister. They saw them off together with Kingya, who wished to take care of herself on the way, and Yin told Yuru to come and play more often. Then he hugged his assistant and thanked her for her help. He said that without her help, Lin Feng would have torn Yin Wudao into small pieces, and then a scale of attitude to the master appeared above her head. Now the degree of location was 80, which meant affection. But she only pushed him away and harmfully told him that it was the last time. She knew Yin well. And even though he was terrible, he still shouldn't cross borders. And Yin was surprised, because the degree of location immediately dropped to 80. And the status of falling in love disappeared completely. He realized that Kingya had misunderstood him. At this time, Lin Yuru was hurrying her brother. She told him that after he took his mother to the hospital, he should hurry to work with Mr. Yin. It was impossible to be late on the first day. 
But her brother was only angry because she had been talking about this to Mr. Yin ever since she returned. He said she was fascinated by this guy. Feng told her not to approach this guy because he has a bad reputation. The girl only said that these were just rumors generated by envious people. In fact, he was not bad. Then their dialogue was interrupted by the impact of the excavator bucket into the wall. A beefy man with a white mohawk was sitting on the boom of this car, who informed the family that the deadline for moving had expired, so the building is now being demolished. It was saying bio. He was holding a shovel in his hand and said that if they didn't dump, they would be buried alive under these ruins. But Feng started running towards them, shouting that they would now see who of this bunch would dare to demolish the house in his presence. Then the brother's way was blocked by Yuru, who told the men that they did not want to refuse to move, but the relocation fee they offered was several times lower than normal, to which the man with the mohawk got angry and asked them if they were afraid of death. But then their elderly mother came out in front of her brother and sister, who apologized for her children, saying that they did not understand much, so there was no need to argue with them. She also said that they agreed to the demolition, and that they would move right away. To this, the man kicked the woman in the head with all his might. There were tears in Feng's eyes, and for a few seconds he went into shock. But then he came to himself abruptly. Lin Feng hovered over the man who dared to hit his mother. He suggested that he try to hit him, to which the man told him that it was not worth anything to throw Feng behind bars, and went grinning. The bully said that he would take care of his sister and mom. In the head of the guy with purple hair, the thought slipped that he should control himself. He couldn't go to jail right now. If he ends up behind bars, there will be no one to protect his sister and mother. The bully only laughed more at the young man, slapping himself on the cheek, and said that he should hit this place. But while the guy was talking about it, suddenly the man standing in front of him was knocked out with one blow. He was hit by none other than Yin Wudao. Immediately straightening up after the blow, the guy said that he could no longer just stand and watch him suffer. Feng's sister was glad to see Mr. Yin, but not he himself. Frowning, the guy asked Wudao what he was doing here. The gentleman replied that he was tired of waiting for his personal bodyguard to come to work, so he decided to visit him at home and find out why he was delayed. Then the insolent man woke up, who got up and shouted angrily, who dared to hit him. But when he saw who was standing next to him, the blonde man's eyes widened and in a trembling voice he whispered the name of the gentleman, immediately changing his menacing tone. The man began to grovel and ask Yin what had happened and why he had come to this house. The guy was too scared, but he didn't lose his gift of hypocrisy. He asked if the young master remembered him. The man introduced himself as Sang Bio, said that he was a member of the Jiang family, and once he was the one who cleaned Wu Dao's shoes. At this time, Lin Feng was shocked that in front of him was one of the members of the Jiang family, which was one of the four great families. Smiling peacefully, Wu Dao said that he understood now why the man's face was familiar to him. He bent down to the ground and picked up a large wrench and asked the blonde man if this thing was his. The latter, also smiling sweetly, answered him that this was his key. He also did not miss the opportunity to joke that Wu Dao did not recognize him and now he will be rich because of this. The man indicated that he was his own person for an eye. Then Yuru spoke softly, who asked her brother why the young gentleman was so friendly with this bandit, to which Feng angrily replied to her that he was saying that they were all the same. But then he turned his head to the picture that unfolded nearby. With loud cries that this blonde man had gone crazy, Yin struck him with this very key. With each blow, he said that this person was bad, who dared to hit an elderly person. When the young master stopped, he heard the blonde man panting and telling him that by his actions Yin was declaring war on the Zhang family. After all, the young master dared to raise his hand against him, knowing about his status and who he is. At this, Wu Dao only grinned, wiping his hands, he told him that it didn't bother him. These words and actions penetrated deep into the soul of the brother and sister. Yiru thought that Wu Dao was not at all like her brother said, and Feng thought that given his pride and his freedom, Yin was very fair. A scale of location appeared above their heads. Hiru's favorability rose to 70, which meant admiration, and Feng's loyalty rose to 50. He was grateful. Yin Wudao was glad that his plan had worked. After all, the best way to bribe a person is to transform in front of them by pretending a little. The flow of their thoughts was interrupted by a bleeding man. He said that if this is the young master's decision, then he has no choice but to seek help from the Zhang family. Yiru was horrified by these words. She understood that this would bring a lot of problems to Mr. Yin. Then everyone heard the screeching of tires. Cars drove up to them. A handsome young man with long red hair and dressed in a strict suit came out of it. He took off his glasses and told Wu Dao that young Master Yin had interfered in the affairs of the Zhang family for nothing. He had no right to do that. Thus he was soiling his hands. This guy was none other than Liu Feng, the illegitimate child of the Zhang family. Wu Dao only grinned at his statement. 
He mockingly asked why the illegitimate child of the family was sent to solve problems. Continuing to scoff, the gentleman asked if there was really no one in the family that they had to send to solve the problems of the bastard. From his words, the guy went crazy and rushed at Yin, stretching out his hands to him. He shouted that no one dared to mock him. Wu Dao was only surprised by this behavior. Wasn't the young man afraid of bringing trouble to the Zhang family by his behavior? But Wu Dao dodged the guy's attack, which surprised him. Yin wanted to strike, even clenched his fist and began to build the trajectory of the blow. But then his path was blocked by Feng, who shouted that he would not let Liu Feng touch his boss. This amused Feng, and he asked Lin if he wanted to start a fight with him. Their fists met, and the illegitimate child was thrown away by the force exuded by Feng. However, Lin noticed that despite everything, Liu Feng is strong. The guy did not expect that there are good masters in the Zhang family, but the angry bastard wasn't going to wait for his opponent to admire him. He decided to use dexterity, since he would not be able to take it by force. Therefore, he began to move quickly. Lin Feng opened his mouth and was taken aback. As long as Feng uses the ghost technique, he won't be able to distinguish his real body. So the soldier king closed his eyes and concentrated. He heard the opponent push off the ground. That was his mistake. Liu Feng decided that he would be able to deliver a strong blow to the opponent's chest. But he was focused and it didn't stop him. Feng was fast, but not fast enough for Feng. He kicked the guy in the neck and discarded a little of it. Their duel was watched by Yin Wudao. The young gentleman noted that the soldier king and the illegitimate child fought on equal terms. He assumed that Liu Feng played an important role in his family. Then a new sign appeared in front of Wudao, saying that a new chosen one had been discovered. Liu Feng had the title Asura. His achievement was the first place on the list of murderers, and there was also a task for Yin Wudao to eliminate Liu Feng. For this, there was a reward of one point of heaven's pride, as well as 36 flying swords of the crystal blood lotus. Wu Dao realized that this was the main character's killer. Liu Feng could use a ghost technique in combination with a flying sword, but could Lai Feng stop the 36 flying swords? Besides, there was the question of who would get his intended. Then Wu Dao felt that something was happening behind his back. He turned his head slightly and saw out of the corner of his eye that Yuru was standing behind him and anxiously watching the duel. And behind the girl, having recovered a little and picking up the same key again, stood Sang Bao. Yin realized that Liu Feng was just distracting Lin Feng so that he would lose his vigilance. Also, Wu Dao was glad that after the transformation, his six senses of perception were strengthened, so he noticed that the girl was going to be hit. And the young gentleman saw in this a good opportunity to look even more noble. Swinging the key at the girl and intending to hit her, Sang Bao shouted that for disobeying the Zhang family, they all doomed themselves to death. Shouting to the girl to be careful, Wu Dao grabbed her by the shoulders and turned her so as to cover her with his back. He took the blow on his back. Tears welled up in Yuroi's eyes. She was delighted that Yin Wu Dao had put himself in danger for her sake. Hearing his sister's cry, Feng turned around and asked if she was okay. But then his opponent got angry that he was distracted during the fight. He urged him to attack. But then Wu Dao replied that everything was fine. And now it was his turn to scratch his fists. He took off his jacket and gave it to the girl who was still in shock. Seizing a stick, Sang Bao shouted to Yin Wudao that young master Liu Feng was already in battle. The man had no choice but to engage in battle with Yin Wudao. But with one blow, Wudao shut up this brute. Not far from them, Yuru admired the young master's strength. At this time, Yin was already kicking. He noticed that, despite the fact that skill is not enough, combat power is growing exponentially. The girl, noticing that she had a free minute, asked Yin Wudao if he was alright, if he was hurt, pulling on the most charming smile. Yin told her that Mrs. Lin could not worry about him. He thanked me for my concern and said that he was fine. Yuru smiled and told Yin to call her by her first name. She apologized that she and her brother had caused him so many problems. But then an idea came to Wu Dao. As a hero who saves a beauty, he should get a little injury. It was the perfect strategy. There were not enough eloquent words to improve the situation. Yin Wu Dao told the girl not to apologize. The guy pointed out that if it wasn't their family that suffered today, but any other, he wouldn't have turned a blind eye to it anyway. He will not allow anyone to mock the weak. The Zhang family is like a vampire sucking the blood out of this city. He couldn't just sit idly by. His speech was interrupted by the scream of the Lin family's mother, who asked him to stop fighting. Here, on the scale of the girl's attitude to Yin Wudao, it seemed that favorability increased by 20%. Now it was 80, which was equal to love. The girl really looked at him with shining eyes full of love. All she had in her head was the thought that he was so handsome. Hiru couldn't believe that there were such perfect men in life completely stuck in my thoughts, forgetting about my brother's duel. But Yin Wu Dao was watching the fight. He noted that both rivals are holding up well, but at this rate they will both suffer greatly. Then the screeching of tires was heard again. Again an expensive foreign car drove up to the scene of the showdown. A handsome blonde man came out of it, in a strict suit without a jacket. 
He shouted for Luo Feng to stop, saying that they were his own, and asked him not to get excited. After a while, Yin Wudao and this blonde man were sitting at the table. Behind the young master was Yuru, and behind the blonde man was Luo Feng. This blonde man was the same friend with whom Wudao had recently been drinking at the club. Smiling, the guy asked if this was the girl they had seen recently at the club, to which Yin asked to talk about the case. Laughing, Zhang Renji said that he had heard about what had happened here. People who were below the status don't know about Yin's relationship with the Lin family. It was really reckless. He handed the check to the table, saying that there were 10 million. Half was due for the move, half was compensation. He asked if they agreed to it, pulling a sweet smile on his face again. Yin turned to Yuru and said that in circumstances in which neither his brother nor his mother could say anything. Now the choice was presented to Yuru, to which the girl was very surprised by this and again asked if she had a choice. Still smiling happily, Yin said that she could really accept or reject this offer. The girl asked Renji if they would reimburse the losses only to the Lin family or to all residents in the old city. The blonde indignantly replied that only she would be reimbursed, because if you compensate everyone, it will take hundreds of millions, and this is a huge loss. Hearing this, the girl said that in this case she refuses this offer. The blonde man began to boil. He menacingly told the girl not to be impudent. The guy had already started shouting at the girl that if she wanted to get more, so he asked to set his price. Then the girl indignantly said that she wasn't talking about that. Their squabble was interrupted by Yin, who, after lighting a cigarette, said that they could not agree, and abruptly jumping up, knocked over the table, shouted to the guys to get out of here. The blonde was very upset. He couldn't believe that his friend had changed his shoes and turned away from him because of a woman. With a smile, Wudao confirmed his words. Enraged, Renji shouted at Yin not to blame him for what he was about to do, pointing his finger at the girl. The blonde man shouted that she thought that their meeting with Yin was a pure accident. Opening all the cards, the guy said that the young master had his eye on her and asked him, Renji, to send her to bed with Wudao. Both the girl and the guy were in shock. Iru was amazed at the revealed truth, and Wudao did not expect that this puppy would dare to expose him. He didn't ask for it. Having finished their fiery speech, the brothers left completely without a face and emotions. Yuru asked Yin if it was true what the blonde had just said. Tears welled up in her eyes, and she repeated the question again. The girl pressed her hand to her chest and looked hopefully at the young gentleman through her tears, and then Yin assumed that she would slap him again. He assumed that if he didn't dodge the blow, he could make her fall in love with him in 10 seconds. It was a good tactic. Therefore, Wu Dao answered this question honestly. And then, as he expected, the girl slapped him on the cheek, saying that he was shameless. But Wu Dao only realized that time had passed. His plan must be completed. He looked at the girl with his most loving and regretful eyes. He ingently said that the girl was swift, like an alarmed swan, incomparable. The guy continued his eloquence by mentioning that when he saw her that day, her soul never returned to her body. The guy said he shouldn't have entered that nightclub, shouldn't have met her. If that hadn't happened, he would have been able to sleep peacefully. He wouldn't get involved in moving because of the demolition, not to mention the wounds he received. He would not have to quarrel with his best friend, with whom he had been friends for more than 10 years. The girl listened to everything admiringly, with her mouth open, and Yin Wudao continued. He said, turning his back to the girl and putting his hand to his heart, that if loving someone is considered shameless, then he must be completely shameless. Then he felt the touch of the girl's hand on his arm. She took his hand, gently hugging him. The degree of her location rose to 90, growing into love. The girl began to apologize. Meanwhile, Yin was smiling triumphantly. His plan had worked, time was up. Here their dialogue was interrupted by Lin Feng, who asked if the Zhang family had left. Confused, Yura ran away from the scene, referring to the fact that she had several things to do at school, so she would go first. But my brother was unhappy with the fact that she was read as a teapot. He could not understand why. Yin Wudao asked that Yura was still at school. Feng told him that she was majoring in the evaluation of cultural relics at Zhang City University, and these days she was supposed to be busy on an internship. A young gentleman decided to change the subject and asked if the boy's mother was well accommodated. Feng bowed his head slightly and thanked the boss for his help. Yin asked his bodyguard what he thought about what happened today. Lin Feng said that it seems to him that something is not clean here. Everything was too suspicious for him somehow. Yin Wudao agreed with him. He said that Liu Feng is very calculating, and his every move in the duel with Feng was well thought out. But he couldn't understand why he had so recklessly attacked Yin. Lin Feng agreed with the boss. He also noted that Liu Feng is very calculating. Today, the bastard, not understanding the question, attacked the boss. According to Feng, this was a provocation to then accuse Yin of attacking the Zhang family. Yin Wudao believed that it was, and he was happy about this situation, because it was a good reason for him to quarrel with the Zhang family. Liu Feng did not come with good intentions, and the fool Zhang Zhenji will not be able to compete with Wudao.
Now it was expected that the Zhang family would have big problems. Therefore, now Yin will deny the connection with them. We'll be able to calmly observe the development of events. Lin Feng said that the boss is very wise. And then Wu Dao saw that the scale of the location above the guy's head had risen to 60, which meant respect. And then Wu Dao asked his bodyguard that if they fought to the death, could he defeat Liu Fang? What would be the chance of victory? Thinking about it, the guy said that without weapons, both of them are not inferior to each other. However, Feng noticed that Liu Feng's fingers were covered with calluses. Most likely the guy was an expert in handling weapons. Only Feng couldn't figure out what kind of weapon he was using. But then Yin Wudao replied that the young man uses throwing knives. Lin Feng's loyalty scale increased to 70, which progressed into admiration. The guy said that the boss is a real superman. He himself remembered that Liu Feng's pose was perfect for a knife thrower. And if the bastard uses them, then the best weapon in the fight against him will be a pistol. At these words, Yin raised his finger, approving Feng's choice and told him to do so. However, Lin said gun control is strong right now. Getting a gun will be very difficult. To which Wu Dao said that there would be no problems with these. He would get it, Lin could calm his worries about this. At this time, on the other side of the city, two brothers were throwing stones into the water. Bao and Feng recalled how they also threw stones in their virginity. The red-haired man said that it must have been hard for Bao and the Zhang family all these years. The inspired guy said that he now owes his life to Feng. Therefore, whatever he did for him, it was worth it. However, he wasn't sure why Liu would join the Zhang family, sadly. But at the same time with anger, Liu Feng said that at that time his mother was not only not recognized, but also tortured to death because of her status as a dancer. But now he's back to make the entire Zhang family pay for it with blood. She also said that there are chicken brains hiding in Zhang Renji's skull. The blonde is not exploring the market, and the reconstruction project of the old city is his lightning bolt in the palm of his hand. This is how he put it, meaning the Hong Kong political term, which meant a card on the palm of his hand with a name, number or a direct request to vote in the election for a particular candidate, that is, direct falsification. Liu Feng said that the old man would have a birthday banquet in a few days. Therefore, when the time comes, Feng himself will take him out of the game. However, Yin Wudao, who has no small power, according to the rumors that Liu has heard, he had heard that even the Dragon King Xiao Chen had fallen into the hands of the young master. Therefore, they, Liu Feng and Sang Bao, will have to defend themselves. The blonde man with the mohawk assured Liu Feng that he would completely avoid meeting Yin Wudao in the future. But then the red-haired man asked if Bao had found the person his brother had asked for. Sang replied that the search was still going on, there were already clues. After falling silent, the young man moved a little further away from his assistant and looked at the photo. He couldn't figure out where this girl was after all. During all the years of studying abroad, he never stopped thinking about her for a day. This time he will definitely not let go of her hand and will not lose her. It was the same Kingya in the photo. Meanwhile, at Yin Wudao Villa, the owner returned home. He was met on his knees by a pink-haired girl who handed him slippers. She helped the guy take off his jacket, at the same time saying that today the Zhang family sent messages that in a few days the head of the family, Zhang Liancheng, turned 60 years old. They sent out invitations to a banquet for Yin Wudao. The young master suggested that they go together so that Kingya would keep him company at the evening. He reminded her that there was no more than a half moon left before the expiration of their contract, so by the time there would be a celebration, she would just be free. He said that when King Yi's father gave her away as payment of a three-year debt as his contract girlfriend, and now Yin was grateful to her for taking care of him all these years, so he would release her according to the agreement. King Ye dropped the gentleman's jacket and hugged herself. She started crying and said that there were 14 days, 8 hours and 42 seconds left, evening at the Zhang family estate. There are many guests in various evening dresses. Among all the guests were Yin Wudao and Senya. The guy was dressed in a strict black suit, and the girl was wearing a short dress with a belt under her chest, bangs. Her beautiful pink hair was arranged in a beautiful high hairstyle. Exclamations of admiration for the beauty of the couple were heard from all sides. Someone wished the young master and mistress a good day. Yin, drinking champagne and hugging Kinyu, wished well-being in return. Somewhere in the crowd, someone asked if Mr. Yin had brought his fiance. Compliments were heard on the beauty of Mrs. Yin. The girl began to be indignant, trying to refute these rumors. She even tried to say that she was not Mrs. Yin and was not in any relationship with the young master. But her refutations were interrupted by Wu Dao himself, who whispered in her ear a question that she did not like in this situation. Blushing, the girl replied that no, she did not mind this arrangement at all. Embarrassment flew through the pink-haired woman's head that she was saying such a thing. Very soon she will leave him. How can she now rejoice at being called young lady Yin? Then the blonde man came up to them with his gorgeous companion, who was Ruo Zhu. He greeted him. Out of fear, Kingya grabbed Wu Dao's hand. 
The blonde man said that he had heard about how the young gentleman warms his hands on someone else's misfortune, meaning the Zhang family. He noticed that it was too mean. Zhang Renji said that the young master's rosy dreams were not destined to come true. Today at the banquet, he will officially inherit the Zhang family, and from now on, he will cover the Zhang clan as well as Ryuzu. Therefore, if Yin Wudao tries to mistreat a girl again, then in response, Wudao could not blame the blonde for rudeness. Here Ryuo entered into the dialogue, who stated that without him, her Zhang corporation is still able to raise its head again. Therefore, now Yin's insidious plans will not succeed. But Wudao simply led Kin Yu on with the words that he was not sure that it would be a long time before both of them would kneel in front of Yin and beg him. To which the blonde replied that he would rather die here than beg Wudao. Roughly, Ryu also answered, saying that she would never bow to such a self-confident bastard. Then the gong sounded, and everyone sat down at their tables. The celebration has begun. The hero of the occasion himself came out and began his speech. He thanked everyone for coming to his birthday banquet. The head of the Zhang family was in a wheelchair delivering his speech. He continued to speak, pointing out that he was already aged. His health was getting worse every day, and he asked all the guests to come here today. He hoped they would help him to testify. The head of the family decided to give up his position and hand it over to his son. The choice was between Zhang Renji, the firstborn of the main wife, and Liu Feng, the illegitimate son. And then, after a dramatic pause, he finally announced that his choice had fallen on Liu Feng. Now Liu Feng is officially the new head of the Zhang family. Roja was surprised that it wasn't Zhang Renzen who should have become the heir. More indignant exclamations were heard from the crowd. Many were surprised by what was happening. They could not understand how he could transfer the position of head of the family to an illegitimate son. They didn't agree, even if Renji is no good. But how can he lose his place as the heir of the head of the family? The blonde himself exploded. He shouted that why hasn't the old one died yet, accused him of having problems with his head. The guy could not put up with the fact that the place of the head was given to an illegitimate son. The old man is completely out of his mind, but his screams were interrupted by Liu Feng, who hit his brother powerfully in the face, thereby throwing him away. He was completely calm with a nasty grin, said that the guy calmed down, it's their father's birthday, you need to observe decency. At this time, Yin Wudao appreciated his friend as a mattress. But then, next to him, King Ya inquiringly said that Liu Feng had returned. Yin turned his attention to her. He saw that the girl was pale, but what was the reason? Then a sign appeared in front of Yin Wudao again, which read that a new task had been issued. The side task was to conquer the beloved daughter of Heaven Su King Ya. The requirement for the task was as follows. The task will be considered completed when the degree of disposition of the other side reaches 98. The reward for the task will be plus one point of the pride of heaven, the talent of modern medicine. Yin Wudao realized that the Asura goddess Liu Feng was king. But then the young gentleman could not understand whose green hat it was. A green hat in China is called a victim of treason. Who was cheated on? At this time, Liu Feng continued to beat his brother. Then Auntie Zhu rushed at him. She tried to save her son by ordering Feng to let him go. But the red-haired man pushed her away, and the woman fell. There was talk in the crowd about how dare an illegitimate son attack the eldest son. It was too brazen. As Zhang Liancheng, the head could let such a rude bastard become his heir. Yin Wudao noticed that Liu Feng had something to lean on, which is why he behaved so calmly. Shaking off his hands, the red-haired man ordered his brother to be lifted. Then the man with the mohawk appeared, who brought with him another man tied up. This bound man was the butler of the Yin, Zhang Rui family. Liu Feng ordered him to be brought to his knees. Someone in the crowd said that they had come for a reason. A performance had unfolded here. Then Liu Feng took the floor and said that he had found out that the cause of his mother's sudden death was her poisoning by Zhang Rui. The reason she was poisoned was because his mother found out about the affair between the wife of the head and the butler. Mrs. Zhang turned white, and the butler trembled. According to the new head of the family, Zhang Renji is not the first child and the eldest son of the main wife of the Zhang family. He was the illegitimate child of the mistress of the family and the butler. There were cries in the crowd that this was sensational news. Yin Wudao did not expect such a drama in the Zhen family. Today is really the day when the knife was stuck in the ass and the eyes opened. The blonde man angrily shouted that it was all nonsense, and he was the eldest son of Zhang. But the red-haired man suggested that he familiarize himself with the results of a DNA paternity test. On the piece of paper that Liu Feng showed to everyone present, there was a clear inscription that there was no proof of paternity. There was shock on the blonde man's face. He started screaming and crying, how it happened, why it happened to him. Ryuxi realized that the patron she had just found had failed. She blamed it on Yin Wudao, who had foreseen it all in her opinion. The head of the family shouted that from that day on, Renji would lose the giant surname and be expelled from the Zhang family. Ordered to get out of the family home, and with his wife, he decided to divorce Chen Zhu, let him leave with nothing. The servants had tied up the wife and the butler, and were about to go and pick up the blonde. 
But then the former son fell to his knees and began to cry. He asked his father not to expel him, because he had been raising him all this time, begged to be allowed to stay. But then Liu Feng appeared behind his father's back, who offered to help his former brother to leave the house. Renji began to ask for help from the crowd of guests to help him cope with the red-haired man. But in response, he only heard that people would not interfere in the affairs of the Zhang family, or jokes that even God would not help him. But then his gaze crossed with the gaze of Yin Wudao, who looked at him with complete indifference and said that bad luck had overtaken him. From the hopelessness of the situation, the blonde fell at the feet of the young gentleman. He said that only Wu Dao could save him now. The guy shouted that his friend could not leave him at such a moment. Grinning, Yin said that a couple of minutes ago someone told him that they would not resort to his help, even if something threatened his life. But the former heir did not give up. He bowed even lower at the feet, crawling on his knees in front of Wu Dao. The guy cried and said that he was wrong, so he would never dare to go against him again. A blonde man even said from the hopelessness of the situation that he would give him the reconstruction project of the old city if the young gentleman would save him now. Yin Wudao also requested the central hospital of Jiang City, and he passed by a guy lying on the floor, who told him that the young man was a villain. But looking back, Mr. Yin told his victim that this was his only way to escape, and the blonde had no choice but to simply agree with this. As a poet, he gave a positive answer to all the requests of his savior. Now it's Yin Wudao's turn to play his performance. He came close to Liu Feng and clapped his hands, saying that it was great. The red-haired man said that they are not enemies of each other with Yin, so he advised him to stay away from the whole situation. Wu Dao told him that the Yin family and the Tseng family are old friends, and that's why he couldn't sit idly by when such a big trouble was hanging over the Zhang family. This exasperated the heir, angry at the young master's words. Liu told him to think it over again. After all, adults are responsible for their words and actions. Grinning, Yin agreed with his words. He pulled out the expert opinion, raised it high above the public and said that the examination was a fake. But Feng did not lose his head and said that this conclusion was made in the laboratory of Zhang University, which is the most authoritative in Zhang City, so he asked to stop talking nonsense. Still grinning haughtily, Yin said that since that was the case, they would refute it right now. Among the guests, Yin Wudao found the dean of this university, Dong, and turned to him. He asked to confirm whether this conclusion was true. The man dressed in a strict suit could not understand what this guy was up to. He was just a headache, because Yin Wudao was not in his business. Putting his hand on the dean's shoulder, and pulling the sweetest smile, Yin said that the dean's son, Dong Fei, works for the Yin family, in the Sheng Tang Corporation. The dean tensed, and squeezed the examination sheet. He did not really understand what his friend was driving at. Yin smiled and said he would take care of him. The dean broke out in a cold sweat and said that he understood the guy. Therefore, clearing his throat, he lifted the sheet above him and loudly notified everyone that it was a fake. The institute has never concluded such an examination. There were whispers in the crowd that it was a fake, that people didn't understand what was going on at all. But Liu Feng didn't give up. He said that even though the examination was refuted, but in what way? By threatening the dean. Zhang Rui had already told them everything, and this was nothing but another examination. Yin calmly tore up a piece of paper and asked what exactly Zhang Rui had said. Someone had heard something. Wu Dao himself did not recall anything like that. Then the man with the mohawk hit the old man in the back and ordered him to repeat everything he had told them last night. The poor man began to cry and asked not to beat him, promising that he would tell everything. He began his story about how he and Chen Zhu met 20 years ago, but he was interrupted by Wu Dao, who ordered him to shut up. The guy also reminded that Aunt Zhu is the first daughter of the Chen family in Yingchuan. She had an honorable position and, perhaps, she could stoop to contact the most ordinary butler. Yin pointed out that Rui had been a servant of the Zhang family for many generations and was greatly favored by family members. He no longer dared to slander his mistress and bring trouble on the young master. Such infidelity and dishonor are not inherent in an employee. Wounds on the body pass over time, and a good reputation will remain in this world for a long time. And that was the act of a real man, not to defame the name of the family and remain faithful. Between the lines in the guy's speech, the man heard for himself that death is instantaneous, but by sacrificing himself, he will be able to save the life of his wife and his child. Realizing this, the butler quickly changed and became bolder. He jumped to his feet and started shouting that Liu Feng had forced him to frame the mistress and the young master. He would never have allowed himself to get as close to the hostess as it was mentioned earlier. The butler had nothing to do with the young master at all, because he was very loyal to the Zhang family. The red-haired man was furious. He shouted at the man, saying that yesterday this same butler said something completely different. But Rui shouted that he would die to prove his innocence. With these words, he ran away and hit a nearby column, breaking his head, and fell to the floor. Blood began to flow. Yin Wudao instantly turned the situation around and forced the butler to commit suicide. 
In one moment, he destroyed the death trap that Liu Feng had been building for many years. Such behavior was worthy of a man who destroyed the Dragon King. Wu Dao turned to the former head of the family. He gave the right to choose what to do with the rightful heir, the right to inheritance and slander against the hostess, the Zhang family's business. Yin will not interfere in this and somehow influence the decision, he said with a sweet smile. Liu Feng was angry, because in the end, with his skillful game, Yin also set him up. This scoundrel won. And in response to his thoughts, the head of the family ordered Liu Feng to be thrown out of the house. Now he is banished from the Zhang family. He also said that he no longer has such a son. And the guards of the family ran to the red-haired man. However, the guy pushed them away. He went with a quick step to the hostess of the house, grabbing her by the neck and lifting her up. And then he said that he didn't care about their scandals of the Zhang family, as he didn't care about the stupid place of the head of this family. He only came back for one thing, to get revenge. With that, Liu Feng wrung her neck. There was a heart-rending scream of the blonde. He called his mother with tears. There were whispers in the crowd that it was too cruel. Only Yin Wudao, with complete indifference, only said what a pity. And then the head of the family grabbed his heart. His son immediately ran up to him, shouting that his father could not die. With a cold voice, Liu Feng said that the old man was really pathetic, since he was scared to death. Then the red-haired man turned to Yin Wudao. Now Liu wanted to take care of the guy who prevented him from legitimately inheriting the Zhang family. Without being scared or even twitching a muscle, Yin replied to him that talking about revenge was pointless. He assumed that Liu Feng wasn't worried about the Zhang family's hundreds of billions of assets. The young master called him a hypocrite, grinning. The red-haired man pulled his hands to Yin Wudao's neck, saying that he was too talkative for a man who would die very soon. He's just using his skill to send the young master to the next world. But then he was blocked by King Ya, who shouted that she would not allow Liu Feng to kill Yin Wudao. Liu Feng stopped in surprise. He uttered a new name, asking if the girl in front of him was really Er. A blonde man with a mohawk interrupted their dialogue with his eyes. He shouted that Lu Man from the Red Shield Special Service had arrived at the estate, to which Feng said that it was too fast, so the guys went to the window to escape. At parting, Liu Feng shouted that he would find Yin Wudao. King Ye looked sadly after the guys. Yin noticed this and thought that it wasn't about him at all. Only the reinstated Renzen with a knife started running after him. He shouted that Feng should not dare to run away, and that he would outlive him into pieces. But Yin only sarcastically said that Liu had already run away. The blonde man fell to his knees and began to cry. Because his whole family was dead, he is now an orphan. Yin Wudao towered over him, who said in a cold tone that now was not the time to grieve. Now with the sudden death of the head, the Zhang family could not remain in disarray. The young master said he would help with the funeral. But in turn, the blonde man should properly take over the management of the Zhang families. Emboldened, Shenzhen rushed to hug Wu Dao, saying that the guy was the best. But such tenderness was not very pleasant to the young gentleman, so he began to push his friend away from him. After peeling off his friend and regaining his cold expression, Yin Wu Dao said that since the guys have known and been friends since they were diapers, therefore, Yin could not abandon his friend to the mercy of fate. Smiling happily, the blonde man said that Yin is really a good brother. But the young gentleman grabbed the new head of the family by the breasts and told him not to forget and as soon as possible to rewrite the reconstruction project of the old city and the central hospital to Yin. Slapping the pale guy on the shoulder, Wu Dao repeated only one thing so that he would not forget. Rising to his feet, Shenzhen found his companion and approached her. The guy told young Miss Zhang that she had witnessed everything that was happening, so she should understand the situation. He could not offend Wu Dao for her sake, so their agreement before this celebration is cancelled. Now the girl should look for another person. Bowing her head sadly, the girl quietly replied that she understood everything. Bending down to her ear, the blonde quietly advised the girl that the girl should listen to the young gentleman. In Zhang City, no one can resist Yin Wu Dao. This person always gets everything he wants. And among his desires, she was just there. The girl's eyes filled with tears. She went up to Yin Wu Dao and said angrily that the guy had given black for white. She was amazed at how his conscience did not torment him after that. But the guy only quietly asked if it was exactly he who gave black for white. Raising his voice, the guy told her that there were no blind people present. He also pointed out that Zhang Liancheng, the former head, had not guessed for so many years about the truth that was in front of his nose. The Chen family from Yingchuan is so powerful that if the Zhang family had recklessly disowned Chen Zhu and eliminated Zhang Renqi, they would certainly have suffered retribution from Chen. Zhang Liancheng was in a desperate situation, so in order to preserve his fragile reputation, he decided to change the air. And Yin's task was only to help him do it, nothing else. King Ye and young Miss Zhang looked at him with shock on their faces. Renson's former companion did not believe the young master's words and began shouting that Zhang Liancheng would never neglect the blood heir of the Zhang family to save himself. She accused Yin of being delusional. 
But then Yin said that Zhang Rui's ancestors descended from the second son of the eighth ancestor of the Zhang clan, and they share the same blood with the Zhang Liancheng line. Zhang Zhenji and Liu Feng have the same Zhang family blood flowing in their bodies, and if she were in Zhang Liancheng's place, who would she choose Zhang Renji, who has strong support, or Liu Feng, whose mother was a prostitute? Then a scale appeared above the girl's head, which said that plus 20 is the degree of the location and 20. Bowing her head, the girl said softly that she would have chosen Zhang Zhenji. The girl herself was amazed that Yin Wudao knew so much. He was like the devil. King Ya and Wudao returned to Mr. Yin's villa. At the entrance, the guy told the girl to go ahead. He still needed to talk to Lin Feng about something. The pink-haired woman humbly obeyed and went into the house, leaving the owner alone. As soon as the girl left, Yin Wudao's personal bodyguard began to bombard him with questions. What happened to the daughter-in-law? She's scared of something. The guy also noticed that Kingya drove in silence all the way, behaved a little confused, to which the boss replied that these were women who would understand what was in their heads. The guys approached the boss's car. On the way Yin told Feng not to pay attention to the girl. He wanted to show his bodyguard something. There was a small briefcase in the trunk of the boss's expensive car. Opening it, the young gentleman showed the contents to Lin. The violet-haired man's eyes lit up and his mouth watered. The case contained nothing but a desert eagle, a powerful, beautiful and rare pistol. Admiring the boss, the young man asked where he got it. Yin replied with a smile that the mountaineers have their own tricks. With childish delight, Lin Feng stroked the case in the weapon itself. He said that it brings him familiar vivid memories of the army. The young man also complained that he was sorry that he did not have a permit to carry weapons, so he would not be able to boast of his accuracy. But then, clearing his throat, Yin Wudao handed a small plastic card to the guy. It was a permit to carry a weapon. Lin couldn't believe his eyes. The boss had already done this. Grinning, Yin Wudao said that he complained to his grandfather that he was being bullied and he gave him permission right away. With a smile and disbelief, Lin Feng said that no one would dare to offend the young master. Then both guys were interrupted by a loud scream from a girl who shouted that she didn't want something. Quickly grabbing a gun, Feng began to climb right up the walls of the house to the window from where the scream had just come. Yin Wudao's face was frozen with fright and shock. Having penetrated through the window into the house, Feng immediately ran up to the girl and asked what had just happened, why the young daughter-in-law was screaming. The girl was standing near the table, still in the same outfit as at the party. Smiling sweetly, she said that nothing had happened and asked why he was so worried. Lin Feng told her that he and the boss had heard her scream downstairs. The girl thought that it was good that everything was in order. She needed to clean up. She justified herself by saying that she saw a cockroach and pointed somewhere at a crumb on the floor. Feng said it looked more like a bug and stepped on it. Then Yin Wudao himself entered the room, who immediately noticed that the cigarette ash was lying outside the ashtray. He also asked King Yu about this. Horror appeared on the girl's face. The guy grabbed her hand and rudely asked her when he managed to become so illegible. The girl turned her head away and squeaked that Yin was hurting her. But the gentleman was adamant and angry. He said that the ashes are collected in small pieces, not whole flakes. King Ye tried to justify herself by saying that it was because of the wind. Wu Dao pushed the girl away from him, and she fell to the floor with a crash. He was already very angry, shouting where the sea sand in the room came from. He demanded an explanation from the girl. The guy was angry and shouted that the sea sand from the beach. The girl began to tremble and figure out how to justify herself. But her thoughts were interrupted by the gentleman. Yin Wudao asked if the person he was thinking of had come here. Her former childhood friend. King Ye tried to justify herself by saying that everything was completely wrong. She was trying to say something else, but Yin interrupted her. He began to concentrate energy in his palms. At the same time the guy said that those who dare to come to his house so brazenly will be punished. After asking if they wanted to die and simultaneously releasing the force, the young man directed it at the closet. Then Liu Feng shouted out the name of his colleague Sang Bio. The man himself in the closet raised his own hand and strangled himself. The red-haired man had been sitting on the chandelier all this time, right above the heads of Lin Feng and the young master. Sang Bio's body fell out of the closet. All four who were in the room were shocked by this sight. The red-haired man shouted, without ceasing, the name of a friend, and signs flew over the frost. Each of them said that it was necessary to show attention. Asura is out of control. The second recommended the owner to flee and as soon as possible, Yin turned towards his opponent. Liu Feng had already jumped to the floor. He said that Yin Wudao would pay with his life for what he had done. And then the red-haired man threw several knives at him at the same time. Yin Wudao was not at a loss. He said that it was just the anger of the pride of heaven. The guy again summoned the power in the palm of his hand. Mr. Yin said that last night he had already passed to the second level of the true Kai of the Nine Dragons. Therefore, Wu Dao uses body protection to take all of Liu Feng's 36 flying daggers. This protection was the solid wind Kai of the Nine Dragons. 
by giving a solid wind. For Taoist reasons, the firmament consisted of, but the red-haired man did not give up. He asked in surprise if Yin had survived after that, and immediately moved on to another attack, seeing that the young man was not even wounded. Liu Feng made a bloody stab with 36 daggers into the very chest of the owner of the house. Feng's strength amazed the young master, as well as everyone present in the room. The blow was so strong that, having hit the wall, Yin smashed it with his body. Plaster and pieces of the wall fell to the floor, raising dust. After recovering a little, clearing his throat, Yin Wudao stood up, leaning on one knee. After looking at the opponent, Yin said that, as expected from the main character, he really has the blessed aura of the protagonist, but it didn't bother the opponent much. He was still angry, and every minute he was even more ruined. The red-haired man loomed over his opponent, holding his throwing knives in his hands. Liu Feng said he was very surprised that Yin was able to force Feng to use his trump cards with his frail body. However, this would not have saved Wu Dao from punishment. After all, he captured King Yu and killed Luo Feng's brother. Liu Feng shouted loudly that Yin Wudao would pay with death for his sins. 